Yes, this is one of our largest, if not like the top two largest fundraisers that we have in our school that we can gain money and that we can help our students to learn and grow and be the best students possible. I'm Becky Kaiser, Eagle Radio and Hayes Post News reporter. I'm joined by Hannah Augustine, first grade teacher at Holy Family Elementary School in Hayes. And we're talking about the upcoming Catholic Schools Week, which kicks off with the famous Chili Supper and Bazaar. It's all on this episode of the Post Podcast. It is right around the corner and that would be already starting this next Sunday. So we have all sorts of fun planned for all of our students and all of our community. Well, we're going to talk about some of those details. Of course, we want to remind everybody to say thank you to Hayes Car Truck Alignment for being our sponsor for our report for our regular Catholic schools update. And we're going to kick off with what's uh, so well known. Everybody knows about this, whether you're part of the Catholic community or not, but the annual Chili Supper and Bazaar that is held with wonderful food and that anybody can go enjoy, but lots of other activities going on in the school as well. So this is coming up on Sunday. Yes, and then we'll have a whole week of different types of celebrations to celebrate all of the wonderful people and the groups that support our Catholic schools throughout all of the school year and even through the summer. So they are so supportive, and we like to support them and celebrate them all week for our Catholic Schools Week. That is a great thing to do. Talking about the uh, Chili Supper and Bazaar, that's coming up uh, on Sunday, 11 to 2. And we should remind people that you did this one other time, and it has been so successful since then. The drive through program for people who may not be able to stay and enjoy other activities, but they can certainly come through the drive through at school and take a meal with them. Yes, of course. We have such wonderful chili, and we have the heart chicken sandwiches that are like locally known that are so amazing so we like to let everyone enjoy them whether or not they're able to stay and stick around or whether or not they just want to take it to the warmth of their home right now and enjoy it there they can pick it up and if you want to we invite you all to come and stay and enjoy with our celebrations on sunday too so. I know you have a lot of the, the silent auction is always very popular drawings for various items. Lots of games is, that will be back this year for the kids, especially they get a kick out of that. Oh, yes. They're already looking forward to it. They're like, well, how does this work? How does this work? And I keep explaining to them. All right. Well, this is how this works. And then this is how this works. And they're all very excited. The kids enjoy it so much. And we have all sorts of different stations and things like that that they can stop by and enjoy while they're there and also bingo everybody likes a good bingo game so that's always a fun one you also have a book fair uh, this year yes they have it stationed in our library and our librarian has everything set up and the students can go and and, uh, book shop they can shop for books when they want to in our library times this next week and then their parents can come pick them up or us as teachers can also go in and pick out some leveled readers that our students maybe would like to have in our classrooms And it's just a great place for our parents to get to know a little bit more about what their student likes and what they're learning about in school. That's a great opportunity for that. And we should remind everybody that when you go to the Chili Supper and Bazaar, whether you get something through the silent auction or make a donation, that these help, these funds that come in, they help with the school's general operating budget. Oh, yes. This is one of our largest, if not like the top two largest fundraisers that we have in our school that we can gain money and that we can help our students to learn and grow and be the best students possible that we like to have our community help as much as we can and this is a great way that they can help and enjoy with our students and our staff and our all of our wonderful staff so we appreciate everyone that comes out and helps because it is so well deserved and needed as our school so thank you all so much ahead of time a super fun way to kick off catholic schools week now let's talk a little bit about the, the days that follow the Monday through Friday, and you're doing something different every day. Yes, every day has a, a theme. Every theme, every theme has some sort of fun added to it. So um, Monday we have our celebrate the nation. So all of our students get to dress down. I know that all of you know that our Catholic schools kids wear our uniform, and it's really fun for them just to get to dress down and wear jeans for a day. So they get to wear jeans with a red, white, or blue shirt, or red, white, and blue shirt, whatever they choose. And then in that morning, we'll have a prayer service for our nation and just kick off Catholic Schools Week. And then we do a spelling bee that day. And then we invite first responders to lunch to celebrate with our students. They get to come eat with the students and enjoy lunch with our whole school and the staff and everything. I'll bet that's really interesting to meet those people and talk to them in real life about what interesting jobs they have. Yes, and they think that um, they are celebrities on that day they come and they're like we get to eat with the police officers or the fire 
department people or whatever we get to do, they, they're so excited to come and eat with them. And they are too. So like the police officers and stuff like that, they quite enjoy coming and eating with the students as well. So it's a, it works really great for both of them. That's good exchange. Absolutely. What happens on Tuesday then? Um, Tuesday, we celebrate our faculty and staff. So we celebrate the teachers and the principals and everyone. And we kind of just relax a little bit that day. So um, they have the geography bee, which is for third, fourth, and fifth graders. And they get to go participate in that uh, in the afternoon. And then in the afternoon for all of the younger grades that can't participate in the geography bee or, you know, we since I teach first grade, they can't quite sit through all of that without wanting to get up and we don't want to disrupt the older kids. Um, so for K one and two, we get to just celebrate in our classrooms with the homeroom activity. So we get to do something more relaxed that, that afternoon. So enjoy that. And then on Wednesday, celebrate your students and the favorite team day. I can imagine what some of those shirts might be. <laughs> I know what well, they get to wear their favorite team shirts and they get to wear jeans as well. So, um, our, our parents, have to get a lot of different clothing ready for them this week, but it works. <laughs> um, they get to wear their favorite team, and I'm sure that a lot of them are probably going to be wearing some Chiefs gear because they won yesterday. Absolutely. And all of your local teams, we have all sorts of arrays on that day. It's kind of a rainbow. It's really fun to see what they what they like and what sports they, they watch. So, um, And you have a talent show that day as well. Oh, and are the students looking forward to that? They, My students who can't quite partake in the talent portion of the talent show they are so thrilled to get to go watch their older older students at the school participate in the talent show and it's wonderful because they get to showcase all of their wonderful talents that you may not get to see all in the daily so it's really really fun on thursday celebrating vocations and talking about a little bit more about uh the people that help run school and work with the kids in addition to the teachers the religious staff Yes, we have a very, very, very amazing opportunity because um, Immaculate Heart of Mary, they have sisters that come that have come to stay with us and they are here working for us and they are the sisters that we get to be with every day. So they help with the atrium, which is for the catechesis of Leah Shepherd, and they also are able to be in the classroom with the preschoolers and stuff like that. And we have mass twice a week, so we have a different priest that um puts on mass for that and we get to celebrate all of the work that they do and all the prayers and all of the support that they give us so they get to dress as a saint that day so that they can kind of interact with what they think that they're called to do to their vocation maybe as well and then um for lunch they get to come and visit so priests in religious life can come and enjoy lunch just as the first responders do on monday so um and then after mass on that day, the priest and the sisters will also share their journey. So the priest will share with the boys and the sisters will share with the girls what their journey and their, um, their faith vocation is like how, how they got called to be in the religious life. So that the students maybe that are pondering it maybe already that they maybe can hear it from someone right then and there. So it's really, it's really fun. Yeah. That's a great idea. Well, we finally come to Friday. That would be February 2nd, and you're celebrating your community. Uh, a lot of things going on, some a couple different locations than usual. And the thing I have to say that caught my eye, Hannah, was that you're literally delivering cookies as a thank you to the surrounding neighborhood of Holy Family Elementary. Why, is, why do you do that? Um, because the reason why we deliver cookies to the neighbors because we celebrate our community, obviously, but because they donate all sorts of things that they don't know that they donate to our school, like their time in the morning when they need to leave 10 minutes earlier because of all the traffic around the school <laughs> or after school when we're doing our dismissal and things like that, that they need to work around. Or even just like when we're out of recess and it may be a little bit loud sometimes that they, you know, if they have young kids or something like that, they need naps. They have do donated all sorts of things that they don't even know that they've donated and gifted us with. And just being, you know, having clean yards and, keeping things like that kept up so that our students have the best community and environment around them as possible too. That so. is a, a very neighborly idea. I love that. What else will be going in on then on Friday, Hannah? So we have the fifth graders. They lead our first Friday prayer circles and we'll do that in the morning. And then after that, then we'll go um, over to our all schools mass with the Bishop at TMP. And then TMP will be hosting us for our mix it up activities this year. Thank you, TMP, for that. Um, from the teacher standpoint, I'm appreciating you for all of the um, activities that you're helping us with. Um, 
and we will eat lunch over there as well. So our TMP and Holy Family students can all be with each other for the majority of the day on Friday. So they get to be around their whole community of uh, Catholic schools here in Hayes. Oh, that'll be fun. Wonderful, Life Tech. So also, I wanted, while we have you here, I've been thinking about the cold weather that we'd have, and it is warming up just slightly, but has it really affected the kids at school? I mean, I think about all the snow that must be on the playground that has to be moved. Can the kids go out for recess? What all <laughs> has it, how has it affected you? Well, the kids, as um, a first grade teacher, they are very active and they like to move. And so when we're kind of forced to be inside, it's not necessarily the most glorious time as a teacher or as a student but we make do so we have actually gotten some of my first graders really into checkers and really into some board games that maybe they wouldn't have played so it's really really fun to see them interact with each other in a different way that they maybe didn't when they were out on the playground and things like that so it's a it's it's a strain on us as educators to be inside for (laughs) the whole day but it works and we like to see our students interact with each other in whatever way or shape or form it may be so So. learning in a different way it sounds like yes yes flexibility is the key when it comes to this time of the year